Okay, so today we'll see how to install MySQL Workbench to access MySQL or MariaDB. The first thing is uh, you just verify whether your jamp is installed or not. Instead, we are actually checking for the MySQL installation. It could be simple MySQL installation or it could be a bundled using jamp. Okay, so for the instance, I'll simply start up. And if I'm lucky enough, my MySQL service will start. It's configured to default port 3306, so I don't have any issues. My MySQL has started. So first thing first, I'll go to cell and I would say, uh, let me zoom it for you. Okay. Um, so here we are. Uh, MySQL minus u is for the username so for example uh, i'll connect it to the root user it's a dba database administrator so by default when you install mysql or mariadb uh, a root account will be set up for you so on the production server this account still has a password uh, for us we do not have a password meanwhile so mysql minus u root and if i say minus p expect it's in for password i don't have any so i'll say enter and now if i see uh, let me show you who is the user is currently okay so if you say select user then you would see that it's the root account who has logged in perfect so having said that let me see how many databases do i have for the meanwhile To see the list of databases, I would rather say so databases. Uh, perfect. Uh, okay. So let me let me create a database. I'll create database and let's say OIC. So for example, let's load it to load the database. I would say use and the database name oh I see fine so the database has been changed so right now if I have to look for the list of tables we know that we don't have any right now so so tables I don't have any and you can create all the tables as you have discussed inside the class okay so far so good now uh, since everything is fine let's verify uh, let's download and install mysql workbench so if you go to i uh, say mysql workbench workbench then you would see so whatever is uh, <coughs> the MS installer is 64 bit meanwhile so the installer piece will automatically determine what type of installation would you require so for the time being it's 64 bit and MSI installer fine it would ask you for an Oracle account so I have mine you could uh, create it or simply say just start the download if you can't see here it says no thanks just to start the download so you could download it as well simply it will take a minute or two depending upon the internet password okay uh, I would accept the defaults for the meanwhile I would recommend you to do the same but if you have less space in your C drive, then you would uh, change the location and you would install it somewhere else, wherever you need it. Okay, fine. So for the meanwhile, I would choose the defaults. Fine, I want everything, each and everything meanwhile. So I would say complete and then finally install. Great. It says, do you want to allow this app to make changes on your device? Yes, dear. Please do so.
okay looks like everything is fine so let's just start up and please ignore any backgrounds now let me tell you this is a uh, memory hungry application okay so this is a memory hungry application so it might take considerable amount of time to load for you for the first time so if that is it then you do not need to worry we have MySQL connections right here so I would say plus and let's say since this is a local machine that I am trying to connect to so I would rather say local host you could say the same for the host name uh, use local host instead 3306 as I had shown you that this is the default port uh, since I have not reconfigured it so let's accept this username root password I don't have any so let's have an empty password for the meanwhile and uh, let me try to test the connection so it would ask you that this uh, compatibility issue don't mind it just say continue fine then everything is perfect so let's continue here we are so we have a con connectivity now let's double click and so this mess is continue fine now the pins that you have on the top right corner I just want the left one I don't write the I don't want the right one so here we are if you zoom so this is the place this is called the query pin okay so this is your query pin here you would write the commands so this is the section where all our commands commands are written fine so if you have to <coughs> sorry if you have to uh, write a command let's say if I if you look at here we have a schemas and if I have OIC I would say right click and set as default schema so if you remember in the class I used to tell you that on a database server we can have multiple different databases so right now this is just because we have just the OIC so we have no tables no views no store procedures no functions so when time passes we would create few for the timing let's create a new table create table let's say users and that would be like user ID integer type primary key you know what all of these things mean so I will not uh, spend any much time explaining all this username P A R C H A R varchar so that will require some size let's call it 25 not null and unique so here if you see you get some hints as well so don't mind password password in itself is a keyword I have been telling you frequently so you would rather say user password user underscore password and then we have say VAR CHR VARCAR 50 I usually keep all of these things capital so that you can understand or you can get acquainted to uh, keywords inside MySQL as well so those things that I have mentioned in caps are keywords so maybe not null okay fine let's have this thing now if you let's end up with a semicolon and in order to execute the in order to execute you simply select the statement and you have a execute button like here so you could say execute or simply say control enter I would recommend just for having some <coughs> efficiency I would recommend control enter after placing your con say cursor anywhere between the commands so you can place anywhere between the commands and simply say control enter so that command particular command will get executed we have a feature that you can save this file so control s I would rather say it on the say documents I would say DDL statements DDL statements fine 
so now tomorrow or day after tomorrow if you have to revisit this file then you could simply say file say open script open sql script and then you can load your own script or you can pass this file to uh, your target client maybe or if you're working in a team maybe in a group project so you could share this file with your team member and similarly they could have their own scripts are parallelly executing on different machines the other advantage to this is that uh, you can have long multiple different commands and you would simply say one click and it's done all of those commands will get executed one after another okay having said so uh, if you refresh it here then a table would have been here so if i have to verify then i would verify right here all of these things graphically but you know we have learned all of these commands like describing a table and looking at how the structure of a table is so you could rather say table inspector so here you have all of these things look you have all the list of columns and then after uh, you have the privileges what the current user can perform and what are the keys or indexes specified over there so we have primary like and then we have not null for the username and unique for this case right so you have all the informations okay so on this particular table i don't have any triggers and just for the meanwhile i don't have any foreign keys or partitions and this particular <coughs> statement is like such if you remember it was so create table backslash capital G and this is what you used to get all of these things can be done using uh, say graphically and this saves our time professionally once you are into the industry and you are practicing so this saves a lot of time for a developer so in the industry you'll be asked to use uh, MySQL Workbench you'll be freely allowed to use MySQL Workbench but uh, if you really want to learn I would highly recommend using the command line okay so in that way you if you are well acquainted with the command line then you could perform anything in the days to come hopefully uh, you have got the point so how to load things and how to uh, write command and how to execute it so if you have to create a new statement then you would rather say new sql pane and you start working on another thing right or if you go to the home tab you could connect to the other servers so from the same interface you can connect to multiple different databases maybe locally or maybe uh, some uh, geographically located at different location so if you have internet connectivity at that point of time you would specify the ip address you have the username and you have the password you'll get everything from your server so the server administrator guy will pass you all of these informations and ultimately uh, you'll be able to uh, connect to multiple databases you can monitor them and when time passes i'll show you how this designer can be used uh, to design your databases or export it okay so time being on the time being i'll show you each and everything how uh, say migrations can be done like uh, transferring your database from one location to another and uh, migrating your schemas or creating your own schemas so there are a lot many things that can be performed from this uh, interface okay fine then so that will be all for the meanwhile so if you come back here and if i say connectivity then i have options like i can uh, shut up or shut down the instance i have exporting databases and i can see that how many clients have been connected right now okay so if I have, I can see how many clients have been connected. Yeah, I can't. Uh, okay, so if I say refresh every five seconds, most probably I have only one. So that would be the local host. And if I look at the service status, it should be running. It's already running and you can get other informations like when was the last time the server had started and how much cpu does is it uh, currently accessing and what's the traffic uh, how many requests have been coming from the network and all that okay so all of these informations can be uh, seen and observed from the same place excuse me 
some people is, um, keeps on complaining like a few students keeps on complaining that uh, I don't have any particular user or this user account is not added so we have interfaces like such first of all we'll run how our DML data manipulation language and then how DCL data control language works and only then you'll be able to see how graphically these things are done in the industry think so that would be all for today and hopefully uh, I would recommend that you install all of these things and uh, let's see let's meet in the class so I want you to install it and configure it at least try to create a new table using this thing uh, so that you will get acquainted and comfortable beforehand 